you've probably heard of the Stat XP. It's a little box that can stabilize your camera through an advanced combination of motion sensors and algorithms. It's smaller, lighter, easier to use, and even steadier than a gimbal. But it costs $350, and that's more expensive than a tried and true gimbal like the Ronin SC or the Weeble S. Oh, and did I forget to mention? You have a, a phone in your pocket. There's the exact same gyro sensor found in that little black box. If you can attach your phone to the camera, you've basically created a Stat XP, and it'll cost you nothing if you already have the required mounting bits, and $15 if you don't. And look, the results speak for themselves. It's a gimbal shot made without a gimbal. I used to be a big gimbal kind of guy. I'll concede that the effortless floating shots are wonderful, but there is a time and a place for everything. If you want clean, steady motion, go with the gimbal. If you need visceral, immersive shots, go handheld. There's no wrong answer. Well, except when you use a lightweight camera and handheld, you can feel every micro jitter and that's not the look you want. Sure, you can rig up the camera, but it costs money and, you know, we don't do that kind of thing around here. Instead, use a gyro solution. You can get your gimbal shots, and if you turn it down, you can get handheld shots, minus the jitters. The phone gyro stabilization, so you know what? I'll just call it the Phone XP, okay? Is made to compete against the Stat XP. The Stat XP is made to compete against the gimbal. And I'll throw in warp stabilizer in this comparison just to shit on it even more. So, our first category here will be ease of use. And... I have to give it to Warp Stabilizer. It's just a simple push of a button or add an effect and that's it. This is the Phone XP instead XP. The software has a bit of a learning curve, the workflow is a little hard to learn, but once you're done with all that it's pretty easy. It's the same thing as Warp Stabilizer, you just a few clicks. Now on to the next category is software. and. I'd have to give this to the gimbal because basically no software unless you're configuring something on your phone. Warp Stabilizer is in second place here because it's just a button or a click. With Gyroflow and Stat XP, it's you know you have to deal with complicated software. It's kind of sucks, but I would say Gyroflow does take the lead here because it's a better interface. Now in terms of quality, I would have to give first place to the gimbal. There's no crop, and most modern gimbals won't have micro jitters or balancing issues. In second place is the Phone XP and Stat XP. It's digitally stabilized, so there's gonna be a crop, but it, there's no distortion, and the, both of them will correct for rolling shutter and lens distortion. And well, in last place is Warp Stabilizer. As the name suggests, it's warpy and, you know, it's a hit or miss. Now, in terms of speed, I'd have to give this to the gimbal, because all you have to do is balance it on set, and that's it. You don't have to do anything in post. In second place is Warp Stabilizer. It's pretty fast, it, you know, it's only a click. But I mean, it does take a little bit of time depending on how long your footage is to stabilize, and fine-tuning it will take, you know, another few minutes. And in third place is the Phone XP and Stat XP. The first time setup takes a while, but, you know, if everything goes smoothly, it should only take a few minutes. And the last category is pricing. I have to give this to Warp Stabilizer because it's free. In second place, I have to give it to the Phone XP. It could cost you nothing if you already have all the mounting hardware and $15 if you don't. A uh, gimbal will be in third place, cause I've seen some gimbals go as low as 100 bucks, and all the way up to $63,000 if you want to buy an Airy Trinity. Don't know why, but you know, you can. And in last place is the Stat XP at a $350. Overall, I'd say the gimbal takes the cake, but if you're not gonna be using a gimbal all the time, I recommend the Phone XP. It's gonna be a little harder to learn than a gimbal, especially for beginners. But the low cost of entry does let you try it out and see if the workflow fits. I went to this event and even for such a short drive, I wouldn't think of bringing a gimbal. A phone mount on the other hand cost me nothing in terms of weight, so might as well bring it along. All you need on your phone is a sensor logger app and it's pretty simple on set. Get your phone, mount it to the camera, hit record on both devices, and point out a static object and pan around. That'll help with the syncing. Phone XP isn't an excuse to be careless, and you should still keep yourself as stable as possible. 
I learned this the hard way when trying to stabilize shots from that event. Just like a gimbal, you should try to minimize footsteps. Once you're done, export the data from your phone and now you're ready to stabilize. Right, so we're in Gyroflow and all you need to do is set or calibrate your lens, import your video and gyro data, and then hit sync. After you tweak some settings, your video is stabilized. Yeah, not really. Calibrating your lens is tedious, and if you don't warn your phone right, you're gonna need to get the correct IME orientation, and that takes a hot second. If there's never a still object in your shot, the syncing will most likely fail. It visually analyzes your clip, so the syncing won't work well without static features to sync to. I'll leave a link to the tutorial I follow below. Once you get the workflow down, there shouldn't be too much friction to add gyro stabilization in there. Well, after all that, you have a perfectly stabilized video. Once you get this workflow down, it really doesn't take much effort to go through everything. Now, I still have to recommend against this for large-scale projects as keeping track of each clip and its corresponding gyro formation, to put it simply, is a nightmare. While the syncing is fast, it's still gonna add up and you're gonna be waiting for hours. As easy as Gyroflow is to use, it's another piece of software that'll just bloat your workflow. There's one more non-issue for me, at least, but whipping this out on a paid gig is... Like, like, look, you, just, you pull this out, it's, it doesn't inspire confidence with the client. I can't recommend this enough, though, if you're working with zero budget, or if a gimbal just costs too much to be used once in a blue moon. With that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you when I see you.